In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we gather in your most holy name. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, Lord, especially open our hearts to receive the gifts and the theological virtues of our lives, of faith, hope, and love, faith, hope, and charity. As you gift us with these gifts in our lives, we may serve you more and love you more and give our hearts over to you and find salvation and peace in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Remember one time when I was younger, maybe around 10-ish, I was at church. It's my home parish. I was here. And um, I was talking to something. I forget the entire scenario. I was talking to somebody about something, and there was like a college kid. When you're 10, someone in college, someone who's like 20, seems like the oldest, most mature, and wise person in the universe, right? Then when you grow up and you realize that college kids are a bunch of arrogant idiots who don't know what's going on in life, they think they have the whole world figured out, so they talk as such. It's usually how they go especially from Ann Arbor. Anyway, so then, um, so I was talking to this guy. I don't know, he's in the parish. I think that I'm a little naive 10-year-old. I think everyone loves Jesus. I always love Jesus. Everyone in the world loves Jesus, right? And then, remember he said to me, he's like, you know, if, if someone were to actually read the Bible, then no one would be Catholic. And I was like, oh, I want to be Catholic. <laughs> I'm like so sad. Like, I want to stay Catholic I hope my whole life. And I, lo- I believe in the Eucharist and the resurrection, and Our Lady, and the church, and the priesthood, and the confession. I really believed in all these things, and I was young, and I remember being sincerely scared that I would grow up and not believe in Jesus anymore, not believe in the church anymore. So as I grew up in faith, and I grew up in, in, in the Catholic schools, thank God, so I asked a lot of questions, and I sought truth, and I sought understanding, and I realized through faith and reason that the church is true. That the Eucharist is true, that, it, that what I believe is actually true, not just because I was taught it, but because it actually is the truth, the great deep prayer. And what's important to understand with, with faith is that faith is a gift from God. Right? We can learn about our faith, we can learn to defend our faith, we can solidify our faith with teachings, with information, with knowledge, but the very gift of faith is from God. You can't learn it. And there's three virtues that you can't learn. It's faith hope, and charity. Faith, hope, and love. These three things that God has given us, the gifts from God. Those are called the theological virtues. Now, the cardinal virtues, the virtues on which all our faith is based off of, of prudence, temperance, fortitude, and justice, those are ancient. Those are for everybody to grow in as a man, as a woman, and, and as a, a grown-up, as an adult, as a mature, virtuous person. Prudence, temperance, fortitude, and justice is important for us to work on as well. But for today's time, we're going to focus on faith, hope, and love. Because they're gifts from God. They come directly from God, so therefore we have to go to God to grow in them. And all of us struggle in one of them. So for example, in the Gospel, examples of each in the Gospel. Think about Nathaniel's faith in the Gospel. Imagine the whole situation, the whole scenario. Nathaniel comes and he's, he's, he's already negative. He's already thinking that this Jesus guy is nothing. He's from a village from the north, we don't like him. He's a Nazareth. He's from Nazareth. What is from Nazareth? Why is this, who's this guy? Meets him, and immediately Jesus is like, "I saw you under the fig tree. That's how I know who you are." And Nathaniel's like, "You're the Son of God. You're the Christ. You're the King of Israel." And it's like, "Why? Because I saw you over there." Like this, it's a weird interaction, but it's a it's a testament of faith, a testament of of true faith, and not because of any dramatic experience or because he's well-read, or because he knows him, because he witnessed the resurrection, because it's a gift from God to believe in the Christ, to believe in Jesus. Think about Mary today. I think Mary has a good example for us of hope. Think of a hopeless situation. Imagine the scenario. Well, every time we read the gospel, we should imagine ourselves in the scene. So that wedding feast, the wedding feast at that time took days. It wasn't just like an evening at Shenandoah for like four hours and then go home. It was a whole like days of celebrating of this wedding feast. It's the whole village, the whole town would get involved with this. And they run out of wine. Now, any of you have ever been to a Chaldean gathering for anything, but imagine a wedding feast, right? Hundreds of people and you run out of food. Imagine that. It's hard to imagine because we have so much friggin' food at our gatherings, right? But imagine if you ran out of food. Imagine your mother or your grandmother at a gathering of 50 people where there's literally no more food. She would freak out, right? And, and you will be the recipient of the freaking out. Go to the store right now and get everything. Everything would, chaos would ensue. Wedding feast, there's no more wine. Well, that's a huge part of, of the ceremony of celebration is drinking. It's a reality. It has been for thousands of years. And Mary doesn't lose hope. 
Maybe he's calm in a situation. She just turns to Jesus. They need more wine. They're out of wine. And Jesus is like, no. She's like, mm-hmm. Servants, do whatever he tells you to do, right? I'm your mother. You would do what I say, basically, right? And Jesus obliges. Right? But Mary's hope, Mary's in a hopeless situation. And, and the, the gift of wine, wine is always seen throughout Scripture as a, as a symbol of joy, of happiness. The Psalms talk about uh, God gave man wine to cheer his heart. So Mary's hope in a hopeless situation, that she knows that Christ will provide for the needs even in a hopeless and, and stressful situation. Hope. And then Christ and Christ's love is a good example of love today. That he could have said, no, it's not my time. I'm going to manifest myself next month or next year. I'm just here to enjoy the time. They ran out of wine, it's their problem. He doesn't, though. He obliges with immense generosity this gift of love. Because there were these six stone jars, right? And it's not like he, okay, okay, here's a bottle of wine, or here's a case. Six stone jars filled to the brim of cheap wine that we can just use. He has some Boone's Farm, whatever it is, what it is. No. Good wine, to the point where the, the steward of the feast is upset. He's like, why'd you save the good wine until now? You wasted the good wine. So Christ abundantly provides for our needs and our, the fulfillment of our desires with generous amounts and generous portions of good joy, of good happiness. Bountiful. Because He loves us. Because He gives selflessly. Not because He gained anything, but because He gave. So in the Gospel, one, one Gospel, amazing examples of faith, of hope, and of love. Now, all of us here, every human being, every Christian especially, every disciple of Jesus, is lacking in one of the virtues. One of the virtues we struggle with than the others. I'll use myself for an example. I don't struggle with faith. There has never been a time where I can say I didn't believe in the real presence of the Eucharist. From my first communion to today as a priest, I believe in the presence of the Eucharist. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus. I speak of it as facts, not as a faith of religion that differs from a different religion. It is factual information. That's how deep my faith is. Not because I'm awesome, but because God has given me that gift. Maybe you struggle in faith. Maybe is the Eucharist really real? Is the priesthood that important? Why is confession necessary? I read this one pamphlet that was on my window one time and it confused me about purgatory, about heaven and hell. Fine. You struggle in faith. No problem. What do we do about it? One, pray. Vehemently. Pray deeply. How is can an ask and beg God increase my faith? When we pray the rosary, right? We should have a tradition, a practice in the first three Hail Marys to be the increase of virtues of faith, hope, and love. Because we need God's grace to grow in it. Right? So we pray as well as we learn. Research. Google. Catholic.com. There's a great website. There's great information out there for us to learn about our faith and grow deeper. That's faith. Hope. Hope is my theological virtue that I struggle with. Because right? I always feel like the burden of the entire Chaldean Catholic Church is on my shoulders. If I don't preach well, then everyone's going to hell. And I'm going to go to heaven. And Christ will be like, you sent everyone to hell because you were a bad preacher. Because you weren't a good priest. Because you were a sinner. And everyone's not coming to Mass anymore. And how are we going to keep the traditions alive? Hopelessness on my shoulders. And it's a joke. Right? Why am I being so hopeless? The trust in God is very hard. Very difficult to do. But that's the virtue of hope. So if you struggle with trusting in the Lord, if you struggle with constantly stressing about finances or the future or what's going to happen, are my kids going to heaven, am I going to heaven, am I going to hell, what's going to happen to the world around us, the world's going to end because Trump is president, oh my goodness. Okay, good. Deep breaths, right? That means the struggle is probably the virtue of, of hope. We take a step back and we pray. We ask God for the gift of hope as well as you look to the good things around us and the hope that is around us. Because the stresses of anxiety, like the, the, like the new drug of the world, is like everybody is anxious. Everybody has anxiety, which shows a huge sense of a loss of hope and this virtue that Christ, that God, needs to give us. That's faith and hope. Now, love. If you struggle with love, it probably means you, you are vengeful or you're, you're constantly angry. Anger is a huge part of, of your life. You always want to get someone back for it. You have a hard time forgiving others. Being generous is difficult for you. Maybe you struggle with the virtue of, of love. What do we do? Like all the other virtues, we pray and beg God for a deeper gift of love. Help us to love like you loved. Help us to be completely self-sacrificial as you are in giving us your graces, giving us your precious body and blood, of giving us yourself and the resurrection for our salvation. That's how we need to grow in love. 
and by giving and being selfless. To practice those virtues is how we grow in it. And I'll leave you with these. So we have the three virtues. We have faith, hope, and love. I want to give you a challenge this week to really pray with which of the virtues of these theological virtues that you struggle with the most. Because everybody has a struggle. Everyone does. It's just a reality of life, and it's okay. We're all in this together. And pray with it this week so that next week for Ba'utha, for the Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of Ba'utha, your prayers, your begging, because Ba'utha means to beg, we can beg God for those three days of a deeper gift of faith, deeper gift of hope, deeper gift of love, whatever it is that you need God's graces to convert your heart deeper to become like God. Amen.